Hello everyone. Today I'd like to talk a little about learning. Now I know the thumbnail and title probably say learning art or something, but the things I'm gonna go over are pretty generalized and you can use whatever you learn here for any kind of skill you want to learn. And since this is a relatively big video, I suppose. Here's a little bit of an index on what I'm gonna go over. First, I'd like to talk a little bit how your brain works in general and how it works when creating art. We're gonna dive into the left and right side of the brain because, you know, when learning art, that's kinda a topic you can't avoid. I'll be referencing and picking out some stuff from Atomic Habits because of habit making in art and basically anything else. And at the end, I'd like to share with you something I also learned from the book Atomic Habits, which can greatly improve your art gains. Now, let's get into the actual topics. So, how does your brain actually work? Well, there are two sides of the brain, if you haven't noticed that already. One side is for quite structured things like talking, language, calculating something in math class, that sort of thing. And the other side is for non-verbal stuff and picture memory, you know, the thing that artists like to call visual library is in there. And also the creative thinking process is in there too. The sad truth is though, that one of these hemispheres of the brain is used much more than the other. And it's sad because it's the left one. The one that uses math and structured logic to think. You know, the one side of the brain that actually keeps us alive by making good decisions. And not the one side of the brain that can come up with a cool fantasy character in no time at all. However, we have that side of the brain, it's just not activated enough. So there is hope for all of us. One way to activate the right side of your brain is to do something completely new. You know, try out a new sport, go into a different location that you've never been there before. Just try to do something that you've never done before. It also works with stuff that you have done in your lifetime but you do it in another way. For example, try drawing something, but upside down. Flip your reference and draw it upside down. You will notice that it's quite hard. However, you will look at the picture absolutely in a different light, pun intended, than before. That is because you're doing something that you haven't done before. And that switches the attention from the left brain to the right brain. It's super easy to just try out. Try to draw a face or an arm. Hell, even an entire person. And you will surely notice that you have a specific way how to draw these things. Oftentimes, that specific way anchors in our childhood and doesn't really look the way we want. However, if we try to draw that upside down, even from an upside down reference, our left brain hemisphere or the lazy brain can't just refer to the habit of drawing it the same all the time, because it's never done that before. Even if you know it's an arm and you're just drawing it upside down, you can't just use your left brain to recall the habit of drawing it the same way over and over again. But why does our left brain always make these habits? And why doesn't it want to learn something new all the time? Well, that's an effect that we still have in our genes from millions of years before. Well, actually not millions of years, but quite a while ago. When we were still cave-dwelling people, we had to hunt and gather stuff to survive. And if we did something that was good, then our brain thought, well, yes, this is good. I'm gonna save that memory so I can do it again without having to expend all that energy to think about it. And so a habit has been created. Back then, it was the habit to, well, hunt animals and bring them back to camp so we could cook them. Since that is something that kept us alive and was good for us, our brain released some dopamine and it was happy. Now, if we would do that task again, we would also get the dopamine. However, the brain wouldn't need to expend the same amount of energy since it has already saved the habit of doing so. In other words, our brain would get all the benefit for less work, which for our brain is very good because our brain is lazy. It'll try to make a habit of mostly anything that just gives us pleasure. That can mean good things, however, that can also mean bad things. And of course, there are neutral things. Things that you do on autopilot, but you're just not aware that they're habits. For example, imagine yourself opening and closing your bedroom door or the door to your apartment. That process is so 
etched into your mind, you do not think about it. You just do it. And you do it almost always the exact same way. And knowing that you always do it the exact same way, what happens if something distresses you while you're doing it and then you're out of the loop? Suddenly, you're sitting there at work and you think to yourself, did I really lock my apartment door? Which is obviously quite important. However, why would you not lock your apartment door? Because you've been thrown out of your habit for once and locking the door just seems to be part of the habit and not having executed your habit successfully, even if you have just been interrupted and you've done it afterwards, your brain won't have gotten the same amount of dopamine it would get when you do it normally. And stuff like that stresses your brain out. So for our brain, it would be best if we could just live our entire lives on autopilot. Everything we do is a habit that has been trained and saved in our left brain side and everything is just easy breezy. That would be the perfect world for our brain. But since that is not the case and our brain has to expend energy every day because there's, you know, some kind of new stuff every day in our busy lives, it just tries to make a habit out of basically anything that it can make a habit. With that, I mean opening your door, closing your door, going to bed roughly at the same time, your bedtime routine, your morning routine, the stuff you do at the train station and even the seat you take in the bus. Everything is saved in your left brain and can be easily recalled without spending much energy. That way your brain has as much energy as possible for new tasks and stuff that it needs the energy for. Now, we've talked about good habits and neutral habits, but what about the bad habits? Why are bad habits so extremely bad? Well, it's kind of simple. If you're doing something good, which is a habit, or you're doing something neutral, which is a habit, then your brain releases dopamine because you did the habit and your brain thinks that's good. However, there is a lot of stuff in this day and age that feels pretty good to us, but is actually kind of bad. For example, doom scrolling through Reddit or Instagram while you're on the toilet for 30 plus minutes. That is a bad habit. However, it feels pretty good. And since it feels pretty good to our body and our brain, our brain will say, yes, this is a good habit and you've done it, so you get the dopamine, which will make you want to do it the next time even more. And some of you already know where this is going. Because doing something bad because it feels good and having to do it over and over again because it felt good and your brain is craving that feeling, that kind of sounds like addiction, which would be quite the right term. However, it's not as bad as like an addiction to drugs or anything. All of our brains are completely addicted to dopamine, which is just normal. The only thing is that we get our dopamine in this day and age through scrolling on Reddit, Instagram likes and staying up late to binge watch our favorite series, which from the evolutionary standpoint of our brain doesn't really matter because we're doing stuff that we like doing and our brain likes the dopamine we're getting from that, so ends well, all's well. However, from the societal standpoint of us wanting to live as a 30-year-old couch potato, it kind of is a problem. And the best way to fight that problem is to achieve getting your dopamine out of good habits and not out of bad habits, which at first sounds pretty easy to do. However, breaking a bad habit is very hard. Exactly because of the thing I've been talking about just before. Our brains are addicted to completing habits. And for our brain, it's much easier to say, well, we're just gonna do something that I have saved as a habit, which would be, I don't know, doom scrolling on Reddit for an hour, which is a lot more energy efficient than going to the gym for this hour. So obviously the brain tries to do the more energy efficient thing. But then how do you actually start breaking a bad habit? That answer is very easy. You don't. Completely cutting off bad habits is basically impossible. There will always be habits that are good and habits that are bad. That's just the way it is. However, there is a technique called habit stacking, which I got from the book Atomic Habits, that makes bad habits into good habits, kind of. The premise is this. I have a bad habit A, and whenever I do bad habit A, I forcefully do a new habit, but a good one, a new habit B. Which means, when I go and watch Supernatural, which would be the bad habit A, 
I will draw alongside it, which would be the new good habit B. I do this enough times and when I watch Supernatural, I kind of long for drawing. And that is because our brain likes to connect everything, especially habits. So by forcefully creating a habit of drawing while doing a bad habit of watching Supernatural for the 10th time, I make this bad habit into a kind of good habit. And once I'm done with watching Supernatural, I can switch to drawing alongside a, I don't know, podcast that tells me that females are inferior and alpha males are the real dominant species, which would make it into a very good habit. This habit stacking or habit replacing also works when you do something and out of that comes a bad habit. For example, if I go to the toilet, I usually take my phone with me and start to scroll on Reddit. But what if I forcefully leave my phone away and while I'm on the toilet, I think about my next day, what I have to do, what I can do and what I want to do. Just make a little plan. I do that enough times and even if I have my phone on the toilet one day, I still kind of want to think about my next day and what I have to do then. That is a very good way to exploit the weakness of your brain in creating habits. This works not just for drawing, of course, however, for basically anything else that you want to learn or do. Now, how can you connect this habit stacking and forming new good habits with learning to draw. First of all, you need to learn what you need to learn, meaning you should have a plan on what can you do and what can't you do. Then you simply make a habit out of looking at this plan every now and then, maybe once a week or once every two weeks. And then you use this technique of habit stacking or replacing to get the habit of drawing and learning to draw what you need. For every little part that you need to learn, I would give myself around three weeks if I can draw every day. If that is not the case, then maybe six weeks or maybe nine. That way you can have a very structured learning process, which is the best learning process for your brain, altogether while defeating bad habits of not learning and procrastinating. When all of that goes very well for you, then you can even spill in some of that right side brain action. Try to draw things upside down. Try to draw completely new things. Try a different art style. Just get in there and try to activate your right side of the brain as much as possible. And with these tips and tricks and whatnot all, you will be an art god in no time. Now, maybe you have other tips to stack habits or create new habits that I haven't gone over. I would love to hear from them. Just write them down in the comments. Maybe I have forgotten something or maybe you just have a secret recipe that I don't know. The only thing that I know is my script has ended about three minutes ago and I was blabbering on. And with that, I would tell you happy drawing, create some good habits, and I will see you next time.